uh, welcome to my session on cultural anthropology i call it an invitation to my cultural laboratory so viewers students and listeners i believe that the 21st century needs a much more comprehensive understanding of cultural anthropology now the kind of complexities and the kind of diversities which are experienced by today's uh, individuals are much more broader and much more deeper than they were experienced by our forefathers you can say that cultural anthropology is the study of human beings in its complexity in its diversity we tend to approach and tend to analyze the divergences and at the same time the convergences of human cultures in different places at different times interestingly uh, throughout history if we look at history we find that people belonging to philosophers writers historians belonging to different cultures you know since antiquity have been trying to explore the vast range of human culture not only their own culture but the cultures who were existing side by side them i mean you look at the ancient uh, uh, greek historian herodotus uh, then you we find uh, references of different uh, societies and human races and cultures in the writings of uh, roman authors then we find we come down to the medieval ages and we find uh, an extensive exploration and interaction and explanations by the uh, muslim uh, i would say historians and geographers and uh, sort of anthropologist like uh, al biruni and ibn khaldun and that you know then brings us to the modern times to <coughs> french revolution and enlightenment and it was in enlightenment that particularly the europeans became interested in the study of cultures other than their own and from enlightenment you know from the 18th century onwards we find an extensive engagement into the historical you can say anthropology and people like james fraser you know who wrote the the golden bough they were exploring uh, other religions and other cultures of the east you know uh, similarly in max weber we find an exploration of the non western societies and their religions and their rituals and practices but uh, it was not uh, until 19th century that a full fledged independent and professional uh, discipline was established and uh, we find that in british uh, universities uh, edward b tyler and uh, <coughs> evans pritchard um, bronisla milanoski you know they were the you can say the early proponents and early founders of the uh, anthropology I mean in British you know tradition it is called the social anthropology Evans Pritchard was particularly interested in the and Radcliffe Brown I mean and several other uh, uh, Raymond Firth you know and uh, <coughs> these were the early British anthropologists who were interested in the into the exotic and the uh, non western tribal primitive societies of Africa and I mean, to a larger extent to the more advanced you know asian societies in India in far east you know they were exploring and writing about the people living and the races living in these areas interestingly you know the at the same time the americans were also uh, doing some kind of anthropological work and they call it the cultural anthropology it in the american in academic tradition it is known as the cultural and which we, which uh, i am also you know inviting you to because i am i have also been trained into the cultural anthropology tradition so franz boas we find franz boas and we find ruth benedict very leading you know the, the, you can say uh, influential uh, uh, personalities and people who you know laid the uh, 
uh, theoretical and uh, experimental you know uh, foundations of cultural anthropology in north america and north american universities <coughs> so there is a you can say there is a continuous historical and intellectual and academic fascination and uh, uh, exploration of the cultures uh, of many cultures not only the western culture but many are different cultures different parts of the world uh, where different communities and different societies are living uh, the <coughs> anthropologists have been exploring those diversities and those complexities now the emphasis is in you know trying to explore one's own you know prejudices and biases and centrism and at the same time explore other cultures biases and prejudices and ethnocentrism ethnocentrism is a very important concept of in anthropology you know it explores the uh, uh, hidden our hidden biases and our hidden you know prejudices about other culture how we look at other culture similarly other cultures have their own ethnocentric views about our culture so you can say uh, from the beginning anthropology has been <coughs> number one engaged in the study of multiple cultures throughout the human societies number two it has been uh, fascinated from the western anthropology particularly from the western tradition it has been interested in the uh, study of other or the exotic non western societies and from the non western perspective from the say the muslim perspective or the chinese or the indian perspective the interest have been to explore and understand the western and other you know uh, cultures and societies and third is the holistic understanding of human societies and human cultures in its totality in its entirety you know from past to present and from present to future there is a continuous uh, you can say there is a timeline there is a continuous movement of uh, engagement and investigation cultural engagement and cultural investigation and it has its uh, uh, the discoveries anthropological and cultural discoveries have gone on to influence uh, major uh, philosophical uh, uh, traditions in europe uh, people like ludwig wittgenstein and other you know leading philosophers have come and uh, oswald spangler they have come under the influence of anthropological researches and they formulated their historical and philosophical ideas in light of that so this is how you know cultural anthropology the object of its study is is the diversity and the complexity of human culture in its totality in its you can say in in, in a holistic way now there are different you can say within the uh, cultural anthropological tradition there are different um uh, sub disciplines uh i mean i would highlight three four very important uh, sub disciplines within the cultural anthropology the first is the linguistic anthropology language you know is a very important tool and language is you can say the hallmark of human communication language is the repository of uh, the entire knowledge of human race and language is what connects us from the with the past and language is the instrument with which we can forecast and communicate with the future and it it you know the language manifests from symbolic to the written from the mathematical to the historical and social and economic and cultural science these are all different forms of languages you know this is uh, what at least you know the british fish a famous british a german philosopher wittgenstein claim is mathematics is also a language so language the linguistic anthropology focuses and studies the um, role and importance and significance of language and the way and the and, and the and the communication and how the, it depends um, the, the, the linguistic uh, anthropology invites us to investigate the structure and the system of language and how you know the human culture is preserved uh, evolved uh, disseminated communicated through the use of language then you have this uh, physical anthropology uh, or biological anthropology in which we study the evolution the evolution of human bodies over a long period of time you know and how they have evolved and changed and transformed and how we have come to exist as homo sapiens 
and what is going to be the shape of human beings in the uh, uh, in the future. I mean, what kind of Homo from Homo sapiens to Homo uh, techni technical uh, we are going to become Homo techno. You know, the way technology is unfolding and the way communication revolution has taken over the entire globe, it seems that we are going to uh, soon we are going to be transformed into Homo tech. Already we are a we are sort of a Homo techno, and much of our information, what of much of our knowledge and much of our uh, investigations are technologically shaped and technologically driven and communicated. Then we have this uh, uh, another important source of uh, uh, anthropological knowledge and anthropological uh, uh, outlook and that is the archaeology, study of archaeology and ethnology in which we study the culture, the past culture, the artifacts, the, uh, the behavior preserved in, you know, uh, in uh, material forms of different civilizations, of different cultures, be the Romans, be either the Chinese or the ancient Indians and the Sumerians, you know, and uh, which is a legitimate and genuine through their pottery, through their, you know, engravings, through their language, through their right, writing symbols. We try to understand how the Indus Valley civilization uh, thrived and survived, how the Egyptian civilization, how the uh, you know, Babylonian civilization, how the um, South American, you know, Incas and Aztecs, you know, they survived and lived. So that is an, another important uh, field, uh, subfield of cultural anthropology. And then we have this, uh, you can say, cultural anthropology in which, you know, we are studying the present day complexities, present day, you know, um, diversities, how different cultures are interacting through technology, through trade, through economics, through politics and which is a legitimate and the evolution of human societies from agrarian and tribal, you know, structures to the most modern, modernized, urbanized living and how anthropologists can help and understand and study those settings and those uh, way of life. The, and, uh, the, the last, you can say, important subfield of uh, anthropology can be termed as historical anthropology in which, you know, we explore the uh, historical evolution and origins of human culture and uh, how we can learn about, you can say, other cultures. How can it helps us in understanding the other cultures, other cultures other than our own. So, this is how, you know, cultural anthropology can be studied in different sub-disciplines and different uh, subfields. Then we come to the uh, to the next level, and that how the the uh, you know anthropology, cultural anthropology, uh, approaches its uh, subject matter. So it is mostly through you know ethnography, and through ethnographic exploration. Now, what is ethnography? In ethnography, we make a detailed study, a recorded study of a culture. It can be a primitive culture. It can be a culture of an organization. It can be a culture of a very complex organization like NASA and Microsoft and uh, uh, some business organization, some corporation, you know, anthropologists can help understand the <coughs> cultural bottlenecks and cultural checks and uh, um, cultural, you know, um, uh, cliches and mindsets which are either promoting and uh, pro helping to promote the growth and development of a, of a corporation or uh, the uh, uh, retarding or the retrogressive, you know, are uh, <coughs> cultural uh, practices which are creating inertia within the organization and stagnation. So, um, ethnography is extensively used as a source of data collection. Similarly, anthropologists, you know, uh, you can say they become part of the cultural life. Participant observation is another way of doing you know, and gathering and cultural knowledge. So, most of the time, you know, anthropologists, you know, they become part of a community, of a culture, they live in it, and you know, instead of you um, um, seeing someone uh, sitting outside and making opinion and judging them, or approaching them aggressively, or in a biased position, when you become part and parcel of that culture, 
you come to know that why they are different from us. And you come to respect and value the inherent diversity and inherent complexity and inherent ethical and moral relativity of the cultures, you know, it helps us. No, that doesn't mean that anthropology, you know, does not help us in communicating across culture, you know. There is a historical comparative um, way, there is, you know, then this idea of cultural relativ relativism and then the idea of holism. These three, you know, you can say this is the framework within which the anthropologist can understand uh, other cultures, can communicate uh, uh, complex, compli compli communicate within their own cultures, uh, uh, preserve their knowledge, explore their knowledge, investigate their own knowledge and investigate the knowledge of uh, other cultures and other people. What is troubling within the anthropological tradition is its roots with the uh, colonialism, uh, particularly in India, um, in the Indian subcontinent and the British came, you know, they extensively used the anthropology uh, and anthropological knowledge for spying and in intelligence gathering. And I believe it is used even today to, for intelligence gathering and spying. Uh, there is nothing wrong in it for using it for, as an anth intelligence gathering uh, <coughs> tool as long as, you know, it promotes harmony, it promotes uh, uh, cooperation and it helps in overcoming in the barriers of understanding. So, if we want to, <coughs> if we want to expand our horizons, if we want to expand our horizons of uh, knowledge, if we want to expand our uh, uh, <coughs> uh, views and uh, panoramas uh, of uh, understanding about the human beings, we have to engage ourselves into an anthropological, uh, you can say, way of life, an anthropological perspective. Uh, I remember as uh, um, my graduate studies, I remember that once a friend of mine asked me, uh, how would you define anthropology? What is anthropology? So I, I came back recently, I, I did my uh, uh, <coughs> research work with the nomads and I, I came, I was just, you know, um, was returning from the field work uh, uh, in a fr freshly and I was uh, quite under the influence and uh, impact of my field work and the ethno and the nomadic way of life, the nomadic culture which I uh, explored and investigated. I told him that honestly, from my, uh, if you ask me what is anthropology, it is a way of life. It's not just a, a diachronic or synchronic study of human culture. It's not exploration and uh, uh, <coughs> analysis of uh, diversities and complexities of... It is a way of life. It, uh, you know, transforms and changes the cognitive domain of a human being. It humanizes you. It, you know, uh, 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 it humanizes you and it helps you understand yourself by looking at other, not by othering them, by experiencing the rituals, the practices, the ideas, the concepts of other people by immersing yourself into their ideas and experiences, you discover your own self and you come to realize <coughs> that the distance and the spatial temporal, you know, aloofness was because that you were not, you were away from them. It was in your mind. In reality, we all human beings are one. In reality, we all human beings are one. Our source, our origin is one. And this diversity, as you know, um, in uh, the Islamic uh, uh, <coughs> holy book, in the Quran, Allah says that, I have uh, divided you in tribes, in factions and groups, so that you could recognize each other. These are the identity marks, the colors, you know, color of the skin, the diverse languages, the different ritual, cultural and uh, social rituals and practices, the belief systems, the worldviews, the way of treating the patients, the medical knowledge, 
you know the medical now the medical anthropology you have this medical anthropology you find you have in india you have ayurvedic system in the in in china you have this uh, <coughs> acupuncture historically for the last 300 3000 years 4000 years people have been practicing acupuncture and, and getting and becoming healthy in india you know you have ayurvedic system in 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 the muslim societies you have tip you know islamic hikmat islamic medicine in in similarly in, in the ancient greeks there was a medical system so every now today you have a medical system which developed and progressed after the development industrial and technological development in the western which is known as the allopathic system it has its own way of you know investigating and healing and curing the people so anthropology helps you understand by reflecting and mirroring your own image in the in the mirror of the culture your own culture serves as a, as a mirror and the culture of different societies and people that serves as a mirror you know for you to realize and understand that who you are it helps you become a better human being it helps you uh, become a tolerant human being it helps you become a person who can appreciate and love the <coughs> way of life different ways of life multiple ways of life multiple social and cultural realities it is a science of multiple cultural systems i would say anthropology is a science of multiple cultural systems so that's all for today and you're welcome